have you played games that have this limited inventory system like you have to really think about what is worth keeping and what can be sold off like how strategically can you combine items so that you can make space and on the other hand you have this extra stash or chest that's available in certain locations you can keep sending all these items that you cannot accommodate in your inventory now these items can be junk and these items can be precious items too but because you have like an infinite stash you keep sending all of that to it we know what happens then right when you're accumulating everything and not really strategizing that stash is just going to be there forever and you're not really going to care for it and you just end up sticking to your more accessible inventory if you think about it it is not too different from our brains the stash in our brain while not infinite has enough capacity to store more than what we need for a lifetime but we don't really use all of it do we we often rely on the fresher the closer the experiential inventory part of the brain i welcome you all to my talk on the psychology of immersive unlearning i am purnima sitaraman director of game design at zynga i've been in the gaming industry for about 16 years now and to this date this industry and the impact of games never ceases to amaze me to me games are a simulation of life or a part of life at least psychology and behavioral patterns are critical to both life and game design in fact a lot of game designers take up psychology as a unit of study to get better at game design now let's look at our own life as an example right like you're working hard your efforts pay off you feel accomplished you're motivated further to put in more effort it's forming a loop in game design we call this the positive feedback loop this is kind of a loop with which we live our life perhaps like we all have something to look forward to something we are hoping that will happen which keeps the will to work towards it alive it's always fun to draw these parallels between game design and life i feel there's a pattern of sorts that we are trained to follow no matter the medium and life is actually like a domino effect sometimes the smallest change can create a chain reaction that leads to a large impact which further triggers the next domino so choices do matter you know the fun thing about choices is we always think about it in a pretty binary way but the process to arrive at these choices are almost never binary in fact sometimes we do want them to be you know pretty black and white but it's not when we try to make choices to be trained to be this binary this black and white what we are essentially saying is that we are unwilling to learn of the other path we are not open minded to explore to listen to consider any of that majority of choices are gray you don't always know if the path you have chosen is the best or not we call this the opportunity cost because we will never know so we usually tend to rely on data multiple backing like what has happened analysis of it to make sure we are making use of it and trying to make the better choice also in most cases we don't know the consequence of the choice that we did or did not make sometimes these choices are predesigned depending on social regional or political and even religious belief systems so are they really our choices then or have we been influenced and how does one try to unlearn that to keep space open to relearn things that one may not be accustomed to where one may not have the ability to experience it enter games Now, games are this immersive mediums compared to all other entertainment forms or even educational forms out there which is why the other industries 
are picking up gamification to enhance their impact. So how does it work? When you're playing games, you feel like you are the central character and you invoke their characteristics and then add an element of you to it. Of course, this depends on the kind of games, but largely when we are talking about games being this interactive medium, this is what makes it different. The consequences don't affect your real life directly or immediately. This actually enables you to be bold about these choices. But it makes you wonder, was that the right choice? Would I have done this in real life? Is it really me? Even if you don't think that, you're often thinking about, oh, what if there was a better storyline if I had made that choice? Where was there a better reward if I had uh, taken the other path? The consequence of your choices changes the narrative or the result in some of these games. So if I'm to cite an example in a game world, you know, say you watch a poor kid steal a loaf of bread. Yeah, very stereotype example. Now you have the choice to report it or ignore it. What would you choose? Now it may not seem as impactful at the moment, but what if I tell you the consequence of your choice? So let's say you chose to ignore it. I mean, what's the harm? Here's a poor kid who is hungry. It's okay. It's fine. I don't think it's a big deal. Now let's say I'm going to talk about Hey, the shopkeeper had hidden all his life savings away for, from the burglars into this loaf of bread. Yeah, don't ask me why. Along with the photograph of his dead child. Why not? Without this, he can't take care of his ailing wife, his one true love, the only person for whom he is still alive. Now with this loaf of bread gone, his entire world collapses. He goes back home and kills himself and his wife. Yeah, that took a dark turn, didn't it? Now, knowing this, would you make this choice? So let's say you revisited the game and now you chose to report it so that you can save the shopkeeper. All right, so you have reported it. So the consequence of that is the kid is now sent to jail. It's, they are not sent to a rehab or a reformation center. They face terrible things at jail and eventually grow into a hardcore, brutal murderer who has claimed at least like 50 innocent victims. Now, what would you do? Tough choices, right? But they are tough because I showed you the consequences of it. It almost feels like, wow, there is no good ending here. There is no good choice here. You know, in life, a lot of times we make a choice. It may not be as grave as the example I gave, but sometimes it could be. And we may not see the impact of that choice on others. You know, we are blissfully unaware. Games can show this to you in a very immersive fashion that can help you think how to navigate the situation and maybe even come up with a Third choice in real life, where you can have a better control of this narrative. You know, topics like gender sensitivity, social standing, survival, and many more. Games can actually have characters written on any of this to play as a protagonist for you, the player, to experience the pain, the agony, the struggle, the rewarding moments, all of that, of what people go through. And if you are that person, it brings in relatability. If you are not that person, it brings an awareness. And this awareness is super critical because it instills subliminal learning. What you may be told in real life versus what you feel when you're playing. And the latter tends to stay longer. Remember we talked about our brains, the experiential part. That's something that works as like a response. As humans, these experiences are what enhances our responses to any event. And games are experiences. You know, while giving the player a chance to play something outside of their comfort zone, it enables them to become aware. 
it enables them to question and ask not just the why but the why not now coming to the topic of women there was a time when women couldn't study or work or vote it took a while for women to stand up against it to protest against this to start the movement for them to unlearn and ask why not and also for some of these men who were in power who followed suit and supported them now this psychological change or the experience can actually be felt a lot more with games especially when you cannot put yourself in those situations in real life this process of unlearning to make way for relearning without loading them with real life complications it's a brilliant power that games hold and the more you play the more you unlearn and then relearn and this brings about a change in your behavior or your understanding of things at least it makes a person a bit more open minded more aware about their surroundings about different things you know in 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 games in dungeons and dragons uh, which is like the bible of role playing games uh, we have this alignment spectrum uh, it's a 3 by 3 matrix which so it is starting from lawful good to chaotic evil now what i would say is that these behavioral changes and in role playing game you can depending on how you are navigating through the story uh, it keeps changing this alignment keeps changing and that's exactly what happens in real life too so you can change over the course of your life depending on the choices that you make depending on what you chose to unlearn and relearn even the most trivial choices you make have a reason why did you choose to wear the black dress instead of the blue there are some reasons they may or may not be important in the larger scheme of things but they exist subliminally we are inclined to pick something over the other now games can bring new experiences to you ranging from different narratives socio cultural impacts mental health issues and what not games help you create a change in thinking you know game developers can also observe the change in their users by assessing their user personas or player types There was a time when games like Gris or Celeste or That Dragon Cancer would not have been successful. Today people have also changed. They are more receptive. So what a wonderful medium this is to bring about such great changes and also let people enjoy it. You know while I'm here I would also like to quickly touch upon the fact that the gaming industry is considered predominantly male and there is truth to it. but this has automatically created at some form of an unconscious bias with women and other marginalized genders you know they feel like they can't enter this industry or be successful here but in the context of unlearning let's unlearn that let's relearn that this beautiful medium is open for all in fact we desperately need you so come in and experience it for yourself I would like to sign off by saying that learning is a part of life but unlearning is a choice a choice to make progress to achieve to succeed and to make change happen so here's hoping that you make the right choice thank you for joining me and choosing to spend your time listening to me <laughs>